Hey guys, it's Jasma, and today we're going to make a white chocolate raspberry charlotte. This charlotte has a couple components. It has a layer of cake as a base. This is a sponge cake. We also have a nice and creamy chocolate mousse with a ring of ladyfingers around the edge. And we're also going to top it off with a couple of raspberries. First off, we're going to make the white chocolate mousse that is fluffy and really creamy. So we need to be able to stabilize it by using gelatin. So I'm going to bloom the gelatin by adding this gelatin powder to some water. So we're activating this. So just stir the gelatin in until there are no more clumps and just leave it for it to set. Meanwhile, we're going to separate the egg yolks from the egg whites. We're going to be needing three egg yolks for this mousse recipe. So I'm going to separate the egg yolks and place it in a stand mixer bowl. I'm using my stand mixer today. Of course, you could use a hand mixer or do this by hand. And I'm going to use a whisk attachment to beat this until it's uh, slightly fluffy. Gradually add in the white granulated sugar in two or three stages. Scrape the sides of the bowl just to be sure all of the sugar is dissolved in the egg yolk. Once the egg yolks are a little pale in color and really fluffy, we could just leave this and we're going to move over to the stove. In a small saucepan, add in some milk. Heat it on medium heat until it becomes slightly warm. So I'm going to add in the white chocolate chips. Start stirring this right away to make sure the chocolate doesn't get stuck on the bottom of the pan. You're just trying to melt the white chocolate and combine it with the milk. Keep stirring until all the chocolate is melted and you can't see any more little clumps. Alright, this is smooth, so I'm just going to turn the heat off. Place the gelatin that should now be jelly-like into some hot water and just let it melt. You can see that it should be clumpy and jelly-like. You can also melt this in the microwave, but I find that it has a tendency to overflow easily. So I like to just do it um, like this with the hot water. Be sure you be careful so that you don't get any extra hot water in the gelatin mixture. Back to the stove, you want to turn the heat to medium once again. Make sure the mixture is still warm, and to that we're going to add in the melted gelatin. Keep stirring this so that you're not scorching the bottom of the pot. As soon as the mixture starts to bubble, take it immediately off the heat. And pour it into something like a measuring cup or anything with a pouring spigot. Be sure you do not overheat this mixture or it will curdle and uh, separate and become all weird and clumpy. Now back to the mixer, turn this up to medium and slowly pour in the hot mixture. Mix this on medium speed until it starts to cool down. Alright, this is cooled down slightly. So next I'm just going to pass this through a sieve just to make sure there are no lumps into a bowl. Now try to find a bowl that's quite shallow so that it takes less time to chill. I'm going to cover this with plastic wrap. Make sure the plastic wrap is actually touching the surface of this. Now I'm going to place this into the fridge for it to chill for about an hour or so. It might take a little bit longer than that. Um, you just want to chill it until it's like a custard consistency. It should be nice and light. While the mousse is chilling, we're going to make the sponge cake base. Since there's already a lot of steps to making this charlotte, I want to just keep it nice and simple. So once again, I'm using my stand mixer. Again, you can use your hand mixer do it by hand. I have a whisk attachment and I'm going to crack in three eggs. Start whisking until it's fluffy. Once it's frothy like this, we're going to add in a third of the sugar. Don't dump it in all at once because you want to dissolve the sugar. Keep beating. Add in the last stage of sugar. Beat the eggs until it looks almost like this. This won't form stiff peaks or soft peaks, but this will be really foamy and thick and almost white in color. 
Next, we're going to sift the flour and the baking powder into the egg mixture and fold it into a forms of batter. It is very important that you don't over mix this because you don't want to deflate the eggs. Sift in the flour and fold it really gently until there's no more big clumps of flour left. I like to sift this in in very small portions so I don't have to over mix anything. Very important that you get the bottom of the bowl. Don't want clumps of flour. Alright, it should still be really puffy and foamy and fluffy. I have a baking tray lined with some parchment paper. And I'm just going to pour in the sponge cake batter. Should be a very thick batter that is nice and light and airy. Now spread this out the best you can, but make sure that you don't deflate it, of course. This is gonna be the bottom base of the Charlotte, so try to make it thin and nice and even too. All right, I'm just going to bang this on the counter a couple of times just to release the big air bubbles. All right, now into the oven it goes at 350 degrees Fahrenheit for around 10 minutes or until nice and golden brown. My cake has baked until it's nice and golden brown on top and I have let it cool already. It doesn't take too long for it to cool since it is a very thin layer of cake. So I'm going to flip this out onto a cutting board. I'm gonna peel off the parchment paper. Next, I'm going to cut the sponge cake to the rounds that I need. So today I'm using these mini springform pans. This is four inches in diameter. And these are really handy because I could just plop it out after it is chilled. If you don't have these, you can also use these root mousse ring molds. You'll have to keep it on its base and you'll need a lot of these. Um, so I chose to use these springform pans. And I couldn't find a cookie cutter that was the same size as that, so I made a little template that would perfectly fit into the ring molds. So I'm going to use that as a guide to cut out my cake rounds. It's been about 25 minutes and I took the mousse out of the fridge just to stir it a little bit. You can see it's really jelly-like and it has definitely thickened up a lot. I'm just mixing the foam that has floated to the top into the uh, rest of the mixture so it's nice and even. Once it's an even mixture, I'm going to cover it up once again and place it back into the fridge until it forms a custardy consistency. The mousse has chilled. You can see it is really thick now. It took me about an hour, or honestly just the time that it took to make the cake and cut it out. And you can see it's almost like an extremely thick pudding. All right, this is smooth again. So now we can start to whip the cream. The cream is really good, what's going to give it a lot of airiness. It's what makes it fluffy and it's what's gonna give it the volume. So once again, stand mixer, you can use your hand mixer. I wouldn't suggest you doing it by hand because it does have a lot of heavy cream. Make sure the heavy cream is nice and cold. It helps it beat a lot faster. And just whip this until it forms stiff peaks. All right, stiff peaks has formed. Be sure not to overbeat cream. You can see it's nice and stiff. All right, now we're going to fold the heavy cream into the chocolate mixture that is now nice and thick. This is like the custard. When you're folding it, you want to be sure to be careful because you don't want to deflate the cream or the mousse wouldn't be light or airy or anything at all. So I'm going to start by adding a little bit of the heavy cream. This is just going to lighten up the chocolate mixture. When you're folding, go underneath, around the sides of the bowl, and then flatten through the middle. Once it's pretty much mixed through, add in a little bit more cream. Fold that in, and then add it to the cream. Just mix that through as well, and you can see that the mousse is now really nice and light, both in color and in volume. Once you can no longer see any streaks, 
of the cream or the chocolate mixture. Everything should be one color. That means that your mousse is now done. Now we are ready to assemble the raspberry and white chocolate mousse charlotte. So I have my white chocolate mousse ready to go, my cake rounds, and I have some ladyfingers and fresh raspberries. So first I'm going to take the cake round and lay it on the bottom of my cake pan. Press it in so it's nice and snug in there. Alright, now I'm going to cut the ladyfingers the size that I want it. You can use a full ladyfinger if you want it to be a very tall charlotte. I'm going to trim this down. according to how tall I want it. You want to cut one as a guide and cut the rest to the same way. I need around nine ladyfingers for the size of my cake pan. Um, yours might vary depending on what type of mold you're using. Mm. I had to trim a little bit of my ladyfinger for it to fit all in the mold. Press it all on the sides of the pan. Make sure it's nice and stable so it wouldn't move around. Now we can fill it up. Take a spoonful of the white chocolate mousse. Place it into the center. You can also fill a piping bag full of the mousse and pipe it. It would be neater, but this also works. Just going to spread it out with a smaller spoon all the way to the sides. Throw in a layer of raspberries. And now we're going to top it off with some more chocolate mousse. Cover that all the way. And don't fill this all the way to the top. You want to leave a little bit of space so that we could decorate it later on. Now we're going to do the same with the rest of it. Alright, I have finished three of my charlottes. So now I'm going to place these into the fridge for it to chill so that the mousse could set for at least six hours or overnight, which is the best. The mousse is now chilled, so I'm going to work on some chocolate decorations. Now, of course, this is optional, but it does make an extra touch and make it extra pretty. So first off, I've melted some white chocolate candy melts. This way, I don't have to temper the white chocolate. And then I spread it onto a piece of parchment paper. You want to spread it nice and thin and evenly. And then as it starts to set just a little bit, I'm going to use a knife, a toothpick, or anything that has a sharp tip to cut out some shapes in the white chocolate. Then I'm going to place the parchment paper into a cup. This way, as the chocolate sets, it forms a curved shape. Once the chocolate has hardened, take it out of the cup, peel it off of the parchment paper, and you have some very pretty decorations. The white chocolate mousse is nice and set. It has been in the fridge overnight, so I'm going to start to decorate it. First, I'm going to tie a ribbon around it. This makes it extra pretty, and it also helps make sure that the ladyfingers stay together after I take it out of the cake pan. Tying the ribbon while the mousse is still in the cake pan helps make sure that it will stay intact after you take it out. Once you've tied the ribbon, you can remove it from the mold. Next, I'm going to decorate it with some fresh raspberries and arrange the chocolate decorations. That's how you make these raspberry and white chocolate mousse charlottes. You can see these are very fancy. They are technically a restaurant quality dessert and it would be absolutely perfect for Valentine's Day, which is coming up soon. But you can eat this for any occasion. The white chocolate mousse is really cream and sweet and it pairs perfectly with the raspberries because the raspberries are somewhat sour so it gives it a really nice balance in flavor. I really hope you could try this out. It does take a little bit of time to make but the outcome is definitely worth it. Thanks for watching and see you guys next time. Bye!